meantime, the iconic movie Jaws created a generation of people desperately afraid of sharks. And nearly 40 years later, attitudes are only now beginning to change. NBC's Kerry Sanders is in Montauk, New York, on the eastern tip of Long Island. Kerry, good morning to you. Well, good morning. The largest shark ever caught was caught right here off of Montauk. It was a monster, 3,427 pounds. That's uh, bigger than the average NASCAR race car. You can see a mock-up over there. This is the birthplace of monster shark fishing. It's why jaws like these, this is from a 1,500-pound mako, it's why they're really quite common around here. But here, for the first time, they're not just catching the sharks, they're releasing them. 175-pound mako shark hooked in the Atlantic waters off of Montauk. But those trophy photos of the monster catches here may become a thing of the past, in part because that macho pose on the dock is giving way to a reality. Anecdotal evidence shows there are fewer sharks today than ever. 20 years ago, captains say they'd catch up to 30 a day in these waters. A week ago in this tournament, fishermen caught on average only three a day. 70 pounds. Want to tag it? Yeah, let, let, yeah. Because scientists are just beginning to calculate shark populations, they don't know how many there once were, just that catches reveal there are fewer. It's why, for the first time in Montauk, this tournament was catch and release. Why did you release it? Gotta have ones out there to make more. In the man versus shark wars, that is no small shift in attitude. The movie Jaws established this predator as the enemy to be killed. Unlike the traditional shark fishermen, here they're using something called a circle hook. It doesn't rip the guts of the shark when it's caught. Rather, it catches it right there. So when they release it, it's more likely to live. It's a beautiful fish. It's Normally, this shark would be killed to eat. And we're going to be able to learn from her. Learn from her because here, marine biologists are along for the ride. Scientist says she's breathing fine. Attaching satellite tags where the shark has no sensation. We're going to name that Princess. The fisherman nicknamed this tag shark Princess. You're, you're going to track her? Oh, absolutely. You want to know where first she goes? Kind. We're the first ones to put a tag in them in, in a tournament like this in the Northeast. Of course, we're going to. We made history today. <laughs> This uh, catch and release tournament out of the Montauk Marine Basin was with a purse because they always have money at the end of these tournaments. The Guy Harvey Ocean Foundation funded $10,000 to the winner, which to give you an idea how small that is, most shark tournaments have purses of about $100,000. So catch and release, guys, is really just in the infancy. Yeah, but it's a start, Kerry. Yeah, Thank you very much. By the way, the scientists started tracking Princess back on July 30th, about 95 miles off the coast of Montauk. This is the track wow. that she's taken wow. since cool. they started monitoring her. Looks like she's headed to Bermuda. <laughs> Can you March? blame her? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and they plan to use that information to better understand migration patterns and survival rates. That's pretty cool.